Next, Naraj Jain will present pentosan polysulfate maculopathy. Okay, good morning. I have no conflicts of interest. So this case stumped me. This lady walked into my clinic a couple years ago with a referral diagnosis of pattern dystrophy. And some of the features could be called pattern dystrophy-like, but uh, she had no family history and her molecular testing was unremarkable. When I looked at her medication history, this stood out to me. She was on this medication, pentosan polysulfate, and it brought to mind some other cases I had seen in patients on this drug. I looked back at two years of history of patients I'd seen on this drug, and I'd only seen six, but all six had a similar maculopathy, and it made, made me feel like perhaps this drug was responsible. So what is pentosan polysulfate? This is a macromolecule that resembles glycosaminoglycans. It's been approved for over 20 years for treatment of interstitial cystitis. Uh, interstitial cystitis, or IC, is a bladder or lower pelvic pain syndrome that affects over 1 million U.S. adults, uh, predominantly female. This drug is approved worldwide, uh, most uh, notably Canada, U.S., and Australia for, for over 20 years. So going back to this uh, initial case, and of course, the drug was what stood out to me, but amongst our six cases, they were all on this drug for the same reason. They were all on it for IC. And most of these patients were on a number of different medications. So were we being fooled? Was it an indication bias where actually the underlying disease was the problem? So what I'm going to go over today is a few studies we looked at to explore the strength of the association between this medication and the underlying uh, macular disease. And then I'll go over some clinical features of this maculopathy. So first, we searched our local database for patients uh, with a history of interstitial cystitis, and we, we looked at a number of databases to have a pretty comprehensive look at these patients, and we found 219. Then we had masked image graders review fundus imaging on these patients and determine whether or not they had this unique maculopathy, and then we explored the, potential, the, the risk factors, including medications and demographic variables. This is what we found. Exposure to this drug, pentosin polysulfate, was the only variable significantly associated with increased odds of having this unique maculopathy. But this was just 219 patients seen at an eye center, so we wanted to broaden our search. So next we did an online survey. We teamed up with an uh, online forum for patients with interstitial cystitis, and we asked them a basic uh, survey looking at some general health history questions as well as medication exposures. This was about a five-minute survey that, took 20, uh, that was about 22 questions. We had a response rate of about 14%, which is actually pretty good for this type of survey. This is nearly 900 patients with this condition that responded. And we decided a priori to look at patients who were exposed over 12 years compared to those who reported no prior exposure to this medication. And I'll show you just a couple questions that we asked. We asked, have you seen a retina specialist in the past five years? Have you ever been diagnosed with macular degeneration. In both cases, the patients who described greater than 12 years exposure to the drug uh, answered uh, a significantly greater rate of having the answer of yes. So we wanted to broaden our search a little further. So we did a claims database study looking at a large U.S. national insurer, and we searched for patients who had a new prescription of this drug and then wanted to see what were the odds of them having a new diagnosis of a macular disease five or seven years later. Of course, there's no diagnosis code for pentosin polysulfate maculopathy, so we had an aggregate diagnosis code where we looked at AMD, Drusen, and other maculopathies. At the five-year time point, we found a trend for increased odds of having a new macular disease. At the seven-year time point, it was statistically significant. So what are the clinical manifestations of this condition? We teamed up with several uh, other uh, institutions to retrospectively collect uh, cases of this condition. We, uh, we identified 35 cases. The median age was 60 years old. These were nearly all women. The most common presenting diagnoses were AMD or pattern dystrophy, not surprisingly. Patients were chronically exposed to this drug, nearly 15 years uh, median duration of exposure, although most patients reported visual symptoms of about five years. So the time to onset of disease may be less than 15 years. Visual acuity was fairly well preserved, with 86% of eyes seeing better than 2040. However, these patients are very bothered by their symptoms. They complain of difficulty reading, prolonged dark adaptation, and they're, they're very unhappy. In terms of retinal imaging, we see that fundus photography shows relatively subtle findings, 
which is why this entity possibly was not recognized sooner. The hyperpigmented spots we see in the macula are a pretty classic early finding, but later in the disease course, it appears to give way to atrophy of the RPE. Fundus autofluorescence imaging may be uh, the best way of identifying this condition. In most cases, you have patients who have uh, uh, area of fairly well circumscribed disease in the posterior pole, although in about a third of cases extended to the retinal periphery. Atrophy of the RPE was present in about 40% of eyes, and it was center involving in about 10%. This case in particular uh, was particularly interesting because we feel like we caught this disease at its onset. And the image on the left, you see very early in the course of the disease in October of 2015. The second image from there it was just 10 months later, and you see the disease is spreading to involve the rest of the macula uh, quite rapidly. So what happens when we, these patients stop taking this medication? So here we'll see, if you focus on the areas of atrophy, this is eight months prior to cessation of the drug. And I'll just show you a few, image vi a few clinic visits. So this is four months after stopping the drug and then 11 months after stopping the drug. And so from our limited data, and we followed about 11 of these patients um, out past a year, we do find that areas of atrophy do seem to increase. So the take-home message here is that long-term use of pentosin polysulfate sodium is strongly associated with a vision-threatening maculopathy. This condition masquerades as AMD and pattern dystrophy. And I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, and I'd also say it's quite um, concerning for us. We're all worried about missing another case of drug toxicity in the future, but what I'd like everyone to focus on is the cases that we've seen in the past. Remember, this drug's been on the market for 20 years. Most affected patients are already out there, so if you have the capability to search your EMR, uh, please do uh, search for this drug and try and identify those cases. Thank you. Thank you.